We're going to talk about, so Kevin O'Leary has kind of laid out some of his ground rules for when people should buy a home mm -hmm. and what, uh, you know, what they should have lined up before they look at buying a home. And Dave Ramsey has done the same. So we're going to kind of compare and we're going to look at some of the differences because they're both big time uh, experts in finance and sure. personal finance. People look to them for advice on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll start off. One of the things Kevin says that is pretty unpopular and I don't agree with it. I think it's wrong. Uh, with your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast, realty expert John Brodeen in the house. Yes. First thing I want to say is congratulations, buddy. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, and it's not because he won the lottery, nope. but close. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, explain why I'm congratulating you. Yeah. So my wife and I, uh, we had our baby like three and a half weeks ago. So. All right. Woohoo. Life is good. Yeah. Yeah. Baby girl. Yep. Baby girl. Baby's healthy. Mom's healthy. Uh, who does straight. the Who does the child look more like? You or your wife? Carolyn thinks she looks more like me. Oh, she looks poor kid. Uh, no, <laughs> she looks. <laughs> so I looked at baby pictures of my sister, and oh, oh, she looks a lot like how my sister looked as a baby. Really? Yeah. But, you know that's funny how that works. Yeah. Uh, how, how it looked like a sibling. Yeah. You know more. That, oh, congratulations, yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, weather? What's it like out there? Still crap. It's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still snowing? Yeah. A little oh, bit. Man, Just a man. dusting. Yeah. Terrible. Um, how long of a driveway do you have? Um, like regular city length, oh. nothing crazy. Snowblower type. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, otherwise things are good. Yeah. Things are really good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Big plans for Christmas. Uh, going to be with the in-laws. So. Oh yeah. Well, we'll talk before there. then you'll be here yeah. Friday. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, now we ask you, uh, when you realty experts come in, uh, how would you like to title your show? And, um, you always come up with the good ones. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and your title today is Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank versus Dave Ramsey when buying a home. Yep. Yep. Explain, please. Yeah, so we're going to talk about, so Kevin O'Leary has kind of laid out some of his ground rules for when people should buy a home mm -hmm. and what, uh, you know, what they should have lined up before they look at buying a home. And Dave Ramsey has done the same. So we're going to kind of compare and we're going to look at some of the differences because they're both big time uh, experts in finance and sure. personal finance. People look to them for advice on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll start off. One of the things Kevin says that is pretty unpopular and I don't agree with it. I think it's wrong. Um, is he says, don't buy a home unless you're married and you have kids. Hi. Now I know. <laughs> okay. Um, I think maybe where he's coming from is, so he's in Canada. There are a lot of the major cities in uh, Canada have sure. really crazy prices. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, you know, you need to put a lot of money down and yeah. the, the home buying situation is quite different in Canada than it is in the U S. Sure. So I'm thinking maybe just in general, there are people buy homes later in life. But, you know, as far as here, um, I think that's terrible advice. Uh, I've known tons of, you know, single people who yeah. have bought homes done really well. Um, you know, married couples who don't have any kids or don't plan to have kids or whatever. So I don't think this should have any bearing on whether or not you are ready to buy a home or yeah. not. It, it should come down to some of these other things. And he does have other good points. Okay. So, um, so Kevin also says, uh, so he, he also mentions that owning a home uh, is a great investment over the long term, which I completely agree with. Mm -hmm. Owning a home is not a short term thing. It's not a get rich quick thing. It's not a time the market and get out and then make quick money. Over the long term, it's a great investment. Um, unlike what Grant Cardone says, where you should never own the primary residence. Uh, you know, Kevin disagrees with that. Mm -hmm. He says you should own your primary residence and over the long term, it's going to be a great decision. Um, he says, don't spend over a third of your monthly after-tax take-home income on your house payment. Um, and it's interesting because Dave Ramsey has a little bit different guideline on this. Um, but overall, that's good. He says you should spend a third of your uh, you know, disposable income mm -hmm. on housing. You should spend a third of your uh, income on like you know living expenses. Yep, yep. And you should take a third and you should save it, which is if you can pull that off, you know, you, you're not going to be able to pull this off on a, on a low income. But, yeah. Um, you know, if you have a moderate income or higher income, it's that's a great plan. But there's no third for fun. <laughs> well, that, that would probably fall under living expenses, Okay, I guess. okay. Yeah. Uh, everybody lives different, right? <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, your biggest expenses are housing, transportation, uh, and food. Right, so right. So if you can get your housing and transportation under control, there's plenty of room for fun in those living expenses. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. Usually when people are really strapped for cash and they're they're 
personal finances are a wreck, it's because they're spending way too much money on housing, transportation, and food. Sure, sure. I don't want you to be house poor. These guys don't want you to be house poor. Right, right. You so, still have to live. Yeah, you still mm -hmm. have to live. Um, but uh, that one third for housing is more liberal than what Dave Ramsey says, for sure. Um, and he also says, this is interesting, and this is stuff that I don't think a whole lot of home buyers, especially first time home buyers, do. But it definitely puts you in an optimal position to buy a home is if you don't have enough money saved to pay the mortgage for six months, if you lost your job, don't buy a house. You're not mm -hmm. ready to buy a house. There's a lot of people who buy a house before they have that. Um, but if you are, uh, you know, if you're more risk averse, especially, and you're just trying to make really wise financial decisions, um, waiting until you have that is going to give you a lot more peace of mind. When you buy a house, you're not going to feel broke after you close on a house and make sure. your own payment and such. Mm -hmm. So, now let's get into what Dave Ramsey says. Dave Ramsey's big thing is he wants to put 20% down if possible. Um, and he's really, he does not like the low down payment loans. He's, he's definitely not a fan of VA, USDA, FHA loans, um, all of which have either some sort of fee structure or private mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, where they're, you know, they're going to be more expensive. You get into it with less money down, but you, you know, some of those zero down payment loans, you start with negative equity. He's not a fan of those. He says, put five to 10% down at a minimum. Yep. And if you can save until you get 20% down. And then on top of that, he also says, uh, be debt free and have three to six months worth of living expenses saved up um, in addition to your down payment. Okay. So I think this is really wise advice, um, especially for people who want to be conservative and want to be risk averse. You're putting yourself in such a, like a really uh, bulletproof financial position if you can do this mm -hmm. stuff because mm -hmm. you're, you're just, you're eliminating so much risk by doing this. Um, so uh, he also says, and this is something that, um, he gets pushback on the 20% down and gets some pushback on. And he says, use a 15 year loan. So over, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. When you look at the difference and in how much interest you're going to pay over the life of the loan on a 15 year sure, loan versus yeah. a 30 year loan, it's, mm -hmm. it's usually like, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars right, in, right. in interest that you pay on a 30 year versus mm -hmm. a 15 year, even at the same rate. So I think more people should consider this. Um, or consider once you buy your first home, consider refinancing into a 15 year if your income goes up rather than just buying a more expensive home on a 30 year loan. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, unless you're in just a place where houses are extremely cheap, you need to be relatively high income to be able to um, put 20% down. So you have to have a lot of money saved up and you need to be able to afford uh, the payment on a 15 year loan and he wants no more than 25% of your after tax take home monthly income to be spent on your house payment. Okay. So that's even less. So, mm -hmm. so Kevin says a third of your after tax take home income, Dave Ramsey says 25%. So a fourth, um, more conservative here, but good advice. Main goal here. You can see Dave Ramsey's more conservative. It's more bulletproof. It's more safe. Um, Overall, good advice. It's going to be hard for some people to pull that off, though. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, um, being, but this is a great position to be in when you think about it um, because you're debt free. You have an emergency account with three to six months worth of living expenses in it. Um, you have saved up 20% down, so you have plenty of equity. So if your home goes down in value, you're not going to be upside down at all. Mm -hmm. You got to, you know, you're, you're almost sure not to be upside down in home values uh, like you know, without a giant crash happening. Um, you've got a 15 year loan, so you're gonna be paying it off pretty fast. Um, and Kevin O'Leary, he doesn't say specifically to use a 15 year loan, but he says you should try to be out of debt by the time you're 45. Cause he, he says that's the halfway point through your career. Mm. And once you're halfway through your career, you need to start accumulating more money. If you're gonna work you know. till 90, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he says the average person works till 60. Yeah, they're really, yeah. they're, really settled in, they've begun their career at 30. Sure. And right. by the time you're 45, you should be almost debt free or debt free. And those last that second half of your career, hopefully, when you're earning more money, you should be able to set aside more money for retirement. Now, well, I mean, yeah. okay, I, 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 this will get off topic just a little bit here, John. But when you talk about a 15 year loan, um, say you've got a 30 year mortgage, even making one extra payment a year, if you make 13 of them, does that make a big difference? That makes a difference. Or, you know, People sometimes don't know this. If you have a 30 year loan, you could figure out what the payment would be in order to pay it off in 15 years mm -hmm. and pay extra principal each month. Oh, sure. So, okay. Let's say you're not sure. Maybe you're a little more worried about having enough income to be able to make that higher payment. Um, 
you know, you can set your auto pay up to be, you know, more. Yeah, but it's fifteen hundred dollars a month. Jack it up to two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Seventeen fifty, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's going to cut a lot of time off of your loan. If yeah. You, that's like a, then your back's not up against the wall if you fall on hard times. Um, so that's that's kind of an in between way to mm-hmm. accomplish what these guys are talking about. Um, but it's interesting to see the differences. You know, I think the the worst piece of advice on here is don't buy a home unless you're married and have kids. Yeah. Because I don't think if you're fine, you, you need to worry more about your financial situation. If you mm-hmm. should be buying a home and you need to think about, is it worth it for you to be tied to one specific live in one specific area, one specific house for an extended amount of time, or do you right. value like the mobility and flexibility? Um, but when you're talking about over the long term, they both agree that owning the home that you live in is a better investment. That's completely the opposite of like mm-hmm. what Grant Cardone says. Right. Um, and you know, I, I think these extra safety measures where you're talking about having more money saved up when you buy a home, putting a larger down payment, doing a shorter loan, making sure your payment's a smaller percentage of your after-tax take-home income, all of that is really wise financial advice. Even if people don't follow these rules exactly, keeping these in the back of your mind when you're buying a home will help you make a wiser decision, put yourself in in a way more stable financial right. position. So uh, if it goes Kevin O'Leary versus Dave Ramsey, who is the winner? Um, I think, I think, uh, Dave Ramsey's the winner in my book just okay. because of that first mm-hmm. piece of advice sure. from Kevin. But if you, if you exclude that, um, you know, I think they're pretty even, you mm-hmm. know, uh, the only thing, the only knock on Dave Ramsey is doing a 15 year loan and having that payment be less than 25% of your after tax take home income isn't realistic for people in certain areas yeah. or people with like, um, you know, average incomes or below average incomes. That's mm-hmm. a little more, uh, possible with sure. your higher income. Sure. Sure. But, yeah. All right. So there you go. Um, we do have a winner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe it was going to be a draw. Yeah. No, I, I'd say that first piece of Kevin, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, he was he was quoted saying that in a CNBC article. And who knows if he still holds that opinion. I know Dave right. Ramsey's changed some of his opinions over sure. time, too. Well, he's, he used to say absolutely don't buy a house if you can't put 20 percent down. Now he says try to put at least five to 10 percent down. But it, if at all possible, put 20% down. Sure. I've um, got a couple of texts, John. Uh, Brandon says, hey, I know that guy. And uh, Dave says, fur coat? I was going to say, man, you look like you're a, an old French trapper or something. Yeah, trader. yeah. <laughs> I gotta, think it looks cool, man. It's warm in these yep. uh, harsh it, conditions. It looks like it's and warm. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just don't go wrestle any grizzly bears or anything, right? Uh, John Brodeen, Realty Expert. How does somebody get a hold of you? So if you want to become a client, uh, reach out to me, 701-213-5428. Text or call me. Uh, if you want to get to know me and get to know the local market a little bit better, get real estate tips, thinking about buying in a couple years, thinking about selling in a couple years, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on TikTok, follow me on, or like my Facebook business page, check me out on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm everywhere, so I'm easy to find. You are everywhere. Everywhere. Hey, we'll uh, see you Friday, right? Yep, sounds good. All right, there you go. Uh, that is your realty expert, John Brodeen, your Berkshire Hathaway bi weekly podcast. A couple of days, he'll be back Friday morning, right about 10 o'clock. Until then, enjoy the cold weather and be careful out there. <laughs>